us, but buy, B-U-Y, yeah. us. Does it buy us anything in the sense of, does that avoid catastrophic risk by itself, or no, can no, we actually no. do formulating, it? Formulating, deciding to work over the class yeah. of really dangerous, to use your language, multipolar traps, does that actually point us to some game theoretic thing that all, all of our friends who did the game theory of the Cold War might have missed? Um, I'm not aware yes. of any major game theoretic advance in what you're calling multipolar traps. It's not a major game theoretic advance. What we're saying is that we ha that that phenomena creates a lot of different race to the bottom type scenarios, but with exponentially more power, the race to the bottoms are much deeper bottoms. So in the past, we've had boom and bust cycles associated with those, right? right? And so everybody starts doing the pollution thing until you get uh, a bust that's associated, which creates some new market advantage to clean the pollution up at a certain point because people are willing to pay for that. And so you'll get these kind of boom and bust cycles. That's kind of the best that a market can give you with regard to multipolar traps. But the level of bust that we get with exponential technologies and this many people basically is unviable. And so we've never figured out how to solve for that class. And I'm saying that that's one of the things you're asking, is there a game B that I believe in? It would have to solve for a number of things. It would have to actually remove rivalrous dynamics, which is, which would solve for multipolar traps because multipolar traps are a situation where the well-being of each agent can be optimized independently of and even at the expense of the other agents in the commons. As long as that's the case, we have an incentive to do fucked up stuff with increasing power. That is one way of thinking about an underlying generator of all the catastrophic risks we well, face. 